Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Rapunzel's Tangled Adventure, the series. Um, today we're doing episode 7, In Like Flynn. It's actually one of my favorite episodes of, of season 1, so, yay. Alright, you know how this goes. Um, start right before the actual opening thingy starts, anyway. Like, any logos you might have from any other places you could purchase the, the things, just skip whatever logos you have. Okay, 3, 2, 1, click. Oh right. boy, this episode. So, you want yeah, an episode that focuses on some Gigi other characters and expands on them? This one is no, definitely look, some prime material. Look, this is an episode where the two main characters are um, the characters, play, characters played by Clancy Brown and Zachary Levi. Anything on those circumstances is automatically yeah, going to be... Yeah, some quality time together, yeah. Yeah. I think at some point Zachary Lava becomes more into voice acting because, um, as far as voice acting goes, I think he's mostly just done what is he even uh, Eugene. Doing? Well, okay, Shazam. Oh, it's a Shazam. He's been the Shazam now, and I'm looking forward uh, to that because, you know. Um. Oh, yeah, he was also an Alvin in the Chipmunks, the Squeak Wool. I was well. talking more about recent. Also, ninjas, because yeah. of course. <laughs> okay, good. The famous French ninjas of Corona. That said, yes. he's, he's also great in Chuck. By the way, by the way, uh, might as well give some trivia. Uh, this episode, as we just saw for the credits there, is directed by Steven Semmelweil, uh, a veteran TV animation director who directed episodes for Gravity Falls, for example. Yeah. Yeah, they, they actually do have a lot of stellar talent working on the on this show, like, all around. Also, no, no raps, we're not doing this. <laughs> You know, again, when Disney actually do use their resources to get the best for the best, I appreciate when that occurs. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. Apparently, he's like a oh, very oh, easy. Oh. In fact, in fact, um, might as well mention something about this episode. There's going to be a scene later in the in Rapunzel's room that I'm going to point out because uh, I want to point out that specific scene because um, the, um, the composer Kevin Clish is going to participate in in the humor uh, of this episode and you'll see exactly what I mean when we point to it the point is yeah yeah in, fact, oh, in, no. in a couple of moments actually I'll put it out when it happens I mean, come on, we all know that every politician is obviously honest all the time. Oh, of course. That yes, absolutely. Said, oh, oh, here, here. That, that being said... Basically, I'll think about it. Uh, yeah, we'll let I'll you think know. About it. We'll put a pin in that. Uh, 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 yeah, and uh, what did you say? <laughs> wow, bit of cortex there, eh, Clancy? And now, Bloomberg's pay, pay attention to the music and Cassandra in the background, because I really like this joke in a moment. Yeah, right here. Pay attention to Cassandra in the music. Ah, yes, <laughs> they're Mickey Mousing it. <laughs> You know, that's a classic Disney thing where they sometimes time the music in with certain actions. Something they even brought back for the Lone Ranger film. This was uh, this was done like using sound software. The guy probably just had to press the keyboard on his computer screen in time of her nodding. Oh, that's great. That, Vandalism. That's, that's the thing, though. Back when season... Fr uh, oh. Uh oh Oh. Ooh. Like a child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alan. This is why you're not part of a declaration of interdependence. We kind of already talked about the Mickey Mousing thing, Dwibs, where essentially they time the music in oh, with that, 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 stuff. That is true, Joe, but it's not what I was going to say, actually. Um, I was also going to answer to something that Joe said, <laughs> uh, said about Sound Sauter. That's the thing, Joe, was back in season, when season three was going around, Chris Sonnenberg actually tweeted um, a little video about the recording session of one of the songs, and they were using an actual orchestra. So apparently, yes, there is an orchestra for this show. Again, I wouldn't be surprised. It's Disney. They can afford it. Yeah, because um, 
Because, because, because uh, when it comes to style software, the most the biggest example I can think of is what when Doctor Who got revived, they had to use sound software for their first season, but after that, they used the National Orchestra of Wales. Also, for a oh, second, yeah. for a second, very Clancy Brown leaps into his Mr. Krabs moment. So yeah, so yeah, King Frederick needs to p get some payback and make a prank of his own, while still maintaining a good image. The seal of Equus. So we're going to steal the the royal seal. Come on, but only as a prank. Oh, what? A, what would be? The, who would be that one man? Hey, Dwebs. Hey, Dwebs. Here's a here's a silly little innocent prank that I have for you. I'm gonna steal the fucking. Hey, hey Jack. Hey, wait, it's wait, a, it's a, it's a, just a prank, isn't it? <laughs> a declaration of war. Exactly, okay. and that's what that's what King Frederick. Sounds is like a great prank, prank to me. <laughs> oh well, you know, what, a... you, you know what you you know what you know you know what I got a better idea for a prank. Just steal the crown jewels of England. That'll be a fine prank. I got it. I got it. He steals it, and it's like, oh, he's gonna love it. Oh, he's gonna look back at this prank and laugh. And then, and then it cuts to them at war. And then he's oh. like, it was just a prank, man. It's a prank, bro. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> uh, sure. But yeah, basically, uh, since, of course, uh, Eugene is a veteran at breaking into places and all that stuff, um, he's been recruited by the king to help him play this prank. Oh, so, yeah, obviously, Eugene's going to try to take advantage of this uh, chance to try to impress Daddy. So Unfortunately, well. while Eugene usually works best alone as Flynn, here he has an unexpected partner, the king. Yeah, so basically, Eugene really wants the approval of King Frederick's empire. Again, the issue is that Frederick's actually coming along and, well, Eugene works best alone. And, you know, the fact that he's being accompanied by the flipping King of Corona might be a bit of a handicap in the stealth department. Yeah. Just a bit, though. Sure. God, this reminds me of when England stole the flagpole after the... Big debate over who between them or America would get those weird islands off the Bay of Canada. So here we go. There we are, the episode that could end in all out war. It's just a prank. They'll understand, I'm sure. Well, Dribs, I know this sounds childish when you when you say it like that, but the uh, the King of Equus, he started it. Yeah, he did. Like, <laughs> guys, I think defacing some statue is a bit less severe than stealing oh. a nation's important jewels. Uh -oh. Okay. Well, oh. keep in mind, Wibs, these are ye old times. Defacing a statue probably was seen as some high sacrilege back then. Dwebs, you don't understand. He hurt his pride. Yeah. Oh, he's the king. You can get over it. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay, meantime, okay, so now Clancy was tapping into his inner Lex Luthor there, I see. Yeah. Now, I also really love the B-plot. Basically, Rapunzel doesn't know anything about pranks, because, again, sheltered. Um, so now Cassandra's going to teach her about what a prank is. I wouldn't say sheltered, but, like, held hostage. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah. It's called subverting your expectations. Yeah. Well, mm. that's technically what it is, yes. Subverting? Yeah. Oh my god. So writers are just pranking us the whole time? <laughs> that makes right, a see. suspicious oh, amount go. of sense. Let's play it. Raps! Uh. <laughs> mm, ex yeah. Yeah, what Cass said. I'm expected, but not clever. Giving him a heart attack is funnier. <laughs> Okay, so, unlike Snake, the king prefers to use bushes, um, instead of cardboard boxes, so... I think well, I the cardboard, the cardboard yeah. boxes didn't exist back then. So we use bushes instead. Uh-oh. Just the wind, I guess. Um, <laughs> you were caught. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, oh and, okay, now it's, now it's turned into Hitman! <laughs> sure, why not? You render a guy unconscious, then steal his clothes.
Easy peasy. Uh. I'm not seeing out of this bit. <laughs> yeah, that's very relatable. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Clash, you're sleeping to Mr. Krabs. <laughs> um, also, they waited the entire day. Well, maybe now Eugene's nose will match the uh, wanted posters. Nah. Um, oh. Sure, Varian is the one that has the one poster that got, that got his nose right. We saw this in episode one. I mean, more so that it, it just got bashed around so much against the wall. Mm. So come out. Uh, yeah, just, <laughs> yes, 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 just keep telling yourself that. Angel. This is the father of your future wife. Behave. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just, from, just think of Rapunzel. Just think of Rapunzel. Oh, I love the sperm too. Let's check this out. I have to hit my 2016s. Ooh. <laughs> Not for nothing, Raps, but it looks like the joke's on you with how you are. Not to mention, she looks positively psychotic while doing this. So. Yeah. Rapunzel. <laughs> yeah. Poor Stan. <laughs> well, at least she knows how to polish the shaft well. Yeah, what, what cast that? That was clever, but not funny. Again, Let's go episode, start a wall. <laughs> this episode has some of the show's best comedy. Definitely. So what Emblem's like? No, it's a literal scene. Ah, ah, no. <laughs> so... Lit it is a royal seal, though. So, this is essentially the medieval equivalent of a college school prank. Basically. Right down to stealing the mascot and everything. Yeah, I mean, it's a real seal owned by a king. That's a royal seal. Okay, Makes sense I'm to me. Sure. Okay, is this better or worse than stealing the uh, royal seal? Yeah, this point yeah. just rolled this, with you, this point, you, like, you know what? I'm not even gonna... Let's just move on. Yeah, let's just, just, just get out of here. Again, I love yeah. how Clancy keeps slipping into his other character voices. One minute Cortex, one minute Lex Luthor, another Mr. Krabs. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. I guess it has a built-in, you know, uh, perp, uh, you know, alarm system. Uh oh. Uh oh. oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Words have meanings, guys. <laughs> yeah. No. Hmm. And we just happen to have the royal seal with us for some reason. Yeah. He needs his walk. Realize what you're saying, Eugene. A prank was going to be how the king took you seriously. But it was like a prank it. the king wanted to do. But, but I like his response. Oh, 
That's sweet. Lovely. Because of a terrible idea. Basically, he's just stubborn. <laughs> oh boy. Dinkelberg! <laughs> <laughs> and the seal's name is Trevor Jr. Oh, <laughs> Interesting. Free him! Actually, Shiroi, um, it's interesting you said you phrase it that way, considering the final uh, scene is a reference to a certain movie, but we'll, I'll get, we'll get there. Let me check. Wait, let me use this to check for voices in <laughs> You laughed a lot, actually. Pray we can both fit down that way. Meanwhile... I think Rapunzel is getting... Uh, a mix between Emperor Fool's Day or Christmas. I'm going to Max's face in a moment. Check this out. Oh. <laughs> Shoot, maybe I should hmm. ask it to get pranked by Rapunzel. She'd probably be one of the few people who'd get me a PS5 with how rare those are. She's too nice for this world. <laughs> She's just... Yeah, not mischievous enough. I guess if the prank is that she's gonna give Max a stomach ache. Oh no! Oh wow! Apparently, the King Trevor is actually voiced by Deep Bradley Baker. Sorry, like voiced uh, by who? Bradley, Bradley Whitford, Bradley a.k.a. Baker. Bradley D. Baker. Oh, okay. oh. If I remember correctly, I think Baker makes um, a lot of animal sounds uh, in this show anyway, so... Hmm... Okay, I'm not especially in this alphabetical order. Well, you don't know it very well. <laughs> you don't get to to agree to disagree on Ooh. fats. Actually, so yeah, I checked the guy who played the King Trevor is actually Bradley Whitford, not Bradley D. Baker. Or D. Yeah, Baker. I'm the BD crazy in that. Uh... Hmm. 
<laughs> oh, I think I get it. What? So sorry. <laughs> yes, dear. Hold on. Hmm. I get it, Jova. Ready wait for voice King Trevor, but the very cable is the King Trevor Jr., the CEO. I oh, am. Yeah. That, 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 that. Oh. Ah. Hello? That's, uh. I don't know. I think you should keep it. Oh, hold on. Here's the payoff. Yeah, you didn't get away with it. Oh. Hey, you said you both do. <laughs> so there you go. All of those other pranks was just distraction so that Cassandra wouldn't notice that she was the one being pranked. There oh. you go. <laughs> See? I always... Tuh. Tuh. There you go. And Eugene will help. She got there in the end. Oh, here you go. All right, sure, you're about to get uh, your answer. Well, we're not at war, so, uh, no. Oh? Around the rules. <laughs> and now? Free Trevor! Yay! Yay! That's our office for Free Willy, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I get rid of this dog guy. Oh, oh, oh. there you go. We always click off the, the episode the moment the credits start rolling. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I normally don't mind the Tasha bedding field. Also, uh, ju just quickly before the thoughts of the episode, Pedro, you wanted to mention having Zachary Evin doing more voice acting. Apparently he's replacing Mel Gibson as the role of Rocky for the sequel to Chicken Run. So there is that. Well, oh, that's neat. fine by me. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll go first. That was a good episode. Good. Very great, good character interactions that we don't normally get to see between uh, Eugene and King Frederick. And it's an overall fun episode with good payoffs on both of the subplots. Mm -hmm. good I agree. Uh, nice to see these two characters spend some quality time. And again, it's interesting that despite us being dead early in the episode, when you really get down to it... Uh, uh, Eugene is kind of receiving a bit more character development than Raps in terms of ratio. It's not like she's completely ignored. She even has the RB plot here, here. But you can tell that uh, this, this show is, uh, you know, trying to balance things out instead of just focusing entirely on Raps. Um, which is pretty nice. And also helps humanizing a bit more King Frederick, uh, you know, by giving it, uh, giving him, you know, more, uh, more not in anything flaws, uh, but more of a human side. Him realizing, you know, his own uh, potential faults. Uh, um, him pull, wanting to pull pranks with another king, uh, despite the fact, like we've said, that he's a very dangerous stuff. Uh, you know, good stuff overall for an episode, especially this early on. Like I said, it helps on the long run. Mm -hmm. it helps. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was really. It was really funny. And uh, and yeah. Uh, yeah, the episode didn't end with um, all-out war declared, so um, that's the happiest ending we could have imagined. Indeed. Sure. Uh, pretty much uh, the same as uh, what everyone else has said, and it has some of my favorite jokes in the season, so... Yeah, I awesome. like this one. Same thing for me. To, to me, this is an overall very well rounded episode in general. Like, they did a great job in delivering great payoffs for both plots, and... And again, the, the comedy is completely 100% on point. Every joke hits. So, yeah, definitely a stellar episode all around. All right, everybody, tune in next time for episode 8, Great Exportations. Uh, hmm. See you. Sure, we'll see, we'll see you for that. See ya. <laughs> see ya.